big, brash German SUVs. Both Mercedes and BMW make 600 plus horsepower super SUVs, if you want to call them that. But is the X5M competition or the GLE 63 AMG better? Now I know that the GLE that I'm comparing is the coupe version, but I will go over the differences in the video between this and the regular GLE. So let's go for a drive. Under the hood of the BMW X5M Competition is the S63 engine, or better known as a 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8. In the X5M, it produces 600 horsepower. In this competition trim though, it produces 617 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. Despite this being a pretty hefty SUV, zero to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour is over and done with in 3.8 seconds. Peak torque comes in at 1800 RPM, so gently put your foot down and this thing goes. Of course, if you really put your foot down, then you really get going. Such an intoxicating noise and speed, obviously. However, you do have to watch your speed because you sit quite high up in the X5. Even with the seat in its lowest position, the high driving position makes it feel as though you're not traveling as fast as the speedometer says. But because of the engine's tremendous power, the speed limit is very quickly reached on city streets and highways. But of course, there is a massive price to pay for this much power. Fuel economy is not good. On a highway, it's rated for 13 liters per 100 kilometers. And in a city, it's rated for 17.9 liters per 100 kilometers. And of course, it takes premium fuel. Right now, I am averaging about 17 and a half liters per 100 kilometers. It's not a cheap week for me. Shifting gears is an eight speed ZF automatic transmission. In normal comfort mode, you don't even notice the shifts. They are that smooth. And of course, they are quick. Not quite Porsche PDK quick, but very quick for an automatic. You can also change how the transmission shifts. There's a little button right here next to the park button on the gear selector, and you have three different settings for it. It does speed up the shifting a tiny bit, although you don't really notice it. But what you really notice is that in its most aggressive setting, it holds the RPMs pretty much all the way to the red line. So I'm sure you already know what's under the hood of this GLE 63S AMG. It's a V8. Well, a twin turbocharged V8 to be more specific, or bi-turbo as Mercedes-Benz likes to call it. It produces 603 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. However, it has a little bit of assist from a mild hybrid system, if you can even call it a hybrid system. It's a 48 volt electric assist. This 48 volt mild hybrid system produces an additional 21 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque for brief periods at a time when the engine really needs it. Normally, I've only seen this happen usually when I put my foot down or when I'm just accelerating from a stop at a more brisk rate. But a few other added benefits of this 48 volt EQ hybrid system is the fact that it a improves fuel economy and b makes for a very smooth auto start stop system actually on the auto start stop it'll shut off the engine right before you actually arrive at a complete stop because of the added benefits of the eq boost system and cylinder deactivation the mercedes-benz gle 63 amg can achieve a fuel economy rating of 12 and a half liters per kilometers on the highway and 16.2 liters per kilometers in a city. 
This coupe version is rated at 12.8 and 16.3 liters per hundred kilometers respectively. But of course it's the engine that's the big highlight of this car because as soon as you put your foot down, you reach illegal speed limits like that pretty much. Mercedes-Benz claim a 0 to 100 kilometers an hour or a 62 miles an hour time of 3.8 seconds. And like I said, despite this SUV weighing two and a half tons, I really believe that 3.8 second claim. In fact, I'm pretty sure it can probably even get a little bit lower than that, maybe 3.7 or 3.6 under the most ideal conditions. Because 627 pound-feet of torque 325 wide rear tires with 285 wides on the front and a 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive system. So this thing launches really hard from a stop. Paired with this engine is a 9-speed automatic transmission. If you're in comfort mode, you're not going to feel those shifts if you're gentle on the throttle because they are very, very smooth and fast. However, if you're more aggressive with the throttle pedal or if you decide to take over shifting duties with the paddle shifters on a steering wheel, then predictably the shifts are much more noticeable, but they are still lightning quick. Stopping this beast of an SUV are 400 millimeter diameter front disc brakes with six piston fixed calipers. That's 15.7 inches of brake disc. For everyday driving situations, the brake pedal doesn't need much force from your foot. In fact, coming to a smooth stop can be a bit of a challenge if you have a heavy foot as the brakes tend to be a bit grabby just before completely stopping. At higher speeds, the brakes feel solid with a firm and confidence inspiring brake pedal. If you want more braking performance, the GLE 63S AMG is available with carbon ceramic brake discs for $6,900 Canadian. On the X5M, the front brakes are nearly the same size at 395 millimeters in diameter. That's 15.6 inches in American talk. This particular BMW had winter tires equipped to it when I drove it, but even so, it stopped like as though it drove into a brick wall. Brake feel is very good for such a huge vehicle. Around corners, the BMW X5M competition feels very stable and very planted. It obviously has a four-wheel drive system with four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive sport, but it doesn't have a two-wheel drive option, as in make the four-wheel drive system a two-wheel drive, like you can in the M8 and the M5. But despite that though, it still feels like a rear-wheel drive biased system, because it is. And even in four-wheel drive sport, it doesn't really shake its tail out or get its tail out, but you do feel that it wants to rotate. The steering feel is a bit on the artificially heavy side, but it's quick. If you're not careful, you'll end up turning in too much too soon into a corner. Body roll is very well controlled. The X5M comes equipped with standard adaptive M suspension that can be switched between Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. The different suspension settings are tied to the standard drive modes or you can customize them via the two M mode buttons on the steering wheel. In the GLE 63 AMG, you also get a customizable drive mode, but it's just a one instead of two. And you also get adaptive dampers. The adaptive dampers do a fabulous job of keeping the body settled as you drive over bumps or road undulations. It's also very noticeable of how much less body roll there is between the dampers at their softest setting and when they're in their stiffest setting. This GLE has variable steering, so in comfort mode, you don't have to give it a whole lot of input to just keep driving in a straight line, which makes it great for highway driving. But switch it to Sport Plus or race mode, and the steering is unbelievably quick. Furthermore, the 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive system uses torque vectoring to rotate the GLE coupe through turns and corner exits. You can really feel this system working around tight hairpin corners, even in the dry. Between these two super SUVs, the BMW X5M competition feels a bit more agile on its tires. However, the GLE 63 has a slightly better steering feel and more composed body roll through corners, thanks to its more advanced active dampers 
and active anti-roll bars. So on a racetrack, I imagine that these two would post quite similar lap times. Sitting in the front seat of the BMW X5M competition, I have plenty of space for my six foot four stature. Obviously I have loads of legroom. I could even move the seat further back if I want to. Plenty of headroom and these seats are very comfortable. They have many adjustments, multiple lumbar settings. Uh, there's a thigh extension and the bolsters go in and out. As well, they are massaging, so that's always a plus. The only thing that I see an issue with is these lower lumbar, or not really lumbar, but bolsters on the bottom cushion. They do a good job of holding you in, but when you're getting out, it's quite a step. I mean, I'm six foot four, so I'm okay with it, but shorter people, it's quite a long step. And these things don't really have a whole lot of give in them. So just something to be aware of. In the back of the BMW X5M competition, there isn't quite as much space as its Mercedes-Benz GLE 63 rival. This seat is in my driving position and my knees are really squished up against it. I can put my knees like this to the side, but if I want to be straight, it doesn't really work. However, the seats are very comfortable, although they don't have a whole lot of side support. I mean, obviously. So if you have a crazy driver friend and you're in the back seat, make sure you brace yourself really well. Other stuff in the back, you got sunshades or peasant blockers as some people like to call them. There's climate control and heated seats and of course cup holders. Oh, and I also really like the sunroof. There also has a nice glow all around it. Pretty cool feature at night. Further back, the BMW X5M competition has one of the biggest trunks in its class. With the rear seats in the upright position, there is 960 liters of cargo space. Fold the seats down and that number increases to 2047 liters. Furthermore, I really like the split folding tailgate. It makes loading heavy items in the trunk easier by not having to reach far into the trunk to place a heavy item. It can also be used as a seat at a tailgate party. Sitting inside the GLE Coupe, it's the back seats where you notice the biggest difference compared to the standard GLE. But before we get to that, up in the front, it's business as usual. Six foot four of me has absolutely no issue with legroom and headroom. There's plenty of it. These seats are also heated and ventilated. Speaking of which, the armrests are also heated. So when you turn on the heated seats, those also turn on, a nice feature. They are also massaging and they have multiple adjustments with the lumbar, the bolsters, and the thigh support. Now, in the back, the wheelbase is actually a little bit shorter on the GLE Coupe compared to the standard GLE. And as a result, I have an okay amount of legroom back here behind my own driving position, but it's not as much as I had in the standard GLE. And it's the same story with headroom. There is an indentation here for your head behind the sunroof, but I can still feel my hair just gently brushing up against the very side here of the roof. As for the elephant outside the room, trunk space is not quite what I expected in the GLE 63 coupe, because on paper, this actually has more cargo volume with the rear seats up than the standard GLE. 655 liters for this, 630 liters for the standard GLE. But fold those rear seats down and the standard GLE actually has more cargo volume, about 250 liters more than this one. The 2021 BMW X5M competition starts at $130,000 Canadian. The 2021 Mercedes-Benz GLE 63 AMG has a starting price that is roughly $3,000 more at $133,300 Canadian. But of course, both cars are not fully loaded, even at that price. BMW and Mercedes-Benz have perfected the art of squeezing the most money out of your pockets. 
Fully loaded versions of these SUVs will end up costing you approximately $154,000 Canadian for the BMW and $158,000 Canadian for the Benz, excluding the optional carbon ceramic brakes for $7,000. For that money, both cars come equipped with the usual lashings of leather everywhere you touch, heated, ventilated, and massaging front seats along with heated armrests in both, panoramic sunroofs, carbon fiber trim, ambient lighting, heated and cooled cup holders, soft closed doors, built-in dash cams, and air fragrance systems to name a few. So which of these two super SUVs is best? Well, for a blast around the racetrack, in case you don't have a sports car already, the BMW X5M is a little bit better. But for everyday driving and almost as much fun around the racetrack, the Mercedes GLE 63 AMG is all the SUV that you will ever need. And I'm referring to the regular GLE 63, not this coupe GLE. If you want to know more about both of these super SUVs, I wrote more detailed reviews of them over on my website. You can find the links in the video description. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely another SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next video.